Welcome to the Sailing to Success podcast, the show created exclusively for entrepreneurs and small business owners looking for a safe port in the storm of fast-paced business growth. Lindsay Phillips is the founder of Smooth Sailing Online Support, a company dedicated to helping entrepreneurs and small business owners increase customer service, run their business more effectively, and increase their profits. Prepare to be inspired and learn some practical tips and strategies you can use in your business today. And now, welcome your host and captain for this 30-minute excursion, Lindsay Phillips. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Sailing to Success podcast. My name is Lindsay Phillips, and I'm your host and captain for this 30-minute excursion. Um, As you know, I'm the founder of Smooth Sailing Online Support, and what I love about my business is motivating and inspiring you to achieve more, but most importantly, share really practical tips, business building strategies, so you can be more productive in your business and get more done in less time um, and grow your business. That's, that's what we're here for. So today I've got the perfect guest for that. Um, she's going to share some amazing tips on how to grow your business rapidly, um, especially through sales, how we leave money on the table. So without further ado, I will let you know about Kelly first, um, and then we'll dive into the awesome content. So yeah, today I'm talking about Kelly Roach. She is the host of the top rated podcast, Unstoppable Success Radio. She is an international best-selling author, and we'll be talking about that book too later, and the CEO of Kelly Roach Coaching. As a former NFL cheerleader and Fortune 500 exec, where she was promoted seven times in eight years, which is damn impressive, Kelly brings a powerful combination of proven and profitable business growth strategies, coupled with the mindset, wellness, and productivity practices required to help entrepreneurs build a profitable business around the life they absolutely love. Kelly's passion and purpose is in helping entrepreneurs around the world achieve exponential profit, sales, and income growth. She actually runs a business coaching program. She has mastermind groups, online courses, and does some private consulting with individuals and organizations well. And I've actually seen Kelly in action on stage um, talking about sales at Jim Palmer's Dream Business Academy a while back. And she has such a wealth of knowledge. She is so on point. Um, so welcome, Kelly. I was, you know, so thrilled to have you here. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me, Lindsay. It's so nice to reconnect in, in different lives and different times. I know. And I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And I love your business and what you're doing and you are absolutely stellar on stage. Um, and yeah, you know, you think you know things about sales and this and that, but man, you've got it dialed in, girl. Uh, thanks. I was, ha- I was having fun up there. I think that's the most important thing. Sometimes we take our businesses so seriously and we're all working so hard and we're like hustling down to, you know, achieve our goals, but it's also important to have fun, you know? And for me, I think just remembering your why and, you know, doing things that you love and, and maybe staying away from things that, that you don't is a super important part, I think, of making it for the long haul in business. And so that's, you know, how I try to, I try to set myself up for the long haul as much as possible. Awesome. And I do want to let people know about your best selling book, Unstoppable The Nine Principles for Unlimited Success in Your Business and Life. And I know someone's touted it as the playbook to rapid growth and lasting sustainable success. Um, so maybe tell us about that book. Yeah, definitely. Well, when I first started my business, Lindsay, I was doing all one-on-one uh, high-end consulting. Mm-hmm. And then as the business grew, I moved into group programs and digital courses and that type of thing. And really the reason I wrote the book, Lindsay, was because I wanted something that I could get in people's hands for $12 that literally could change their life and, yeah. and wouldn't require them to invest thousands of dollars to do it. So it was my way of like really giving back to the entrepreneurial community and saying, Hey, look, I understand not everybody is quite ready to make this, you know, huge multi-thousand dollar investment. Maybe they need to dip their toe in the water. Maybe they they need a pushing off point that's going to allow them to grow their income so that they can afford to buy that course or to join one of my programs or to do coaching with me. And so I I created the book as a way to um, kind of break down all of the disjointed million dots that are floating around. Yeah 
around up in the air that people figure out how do these things go together? What am I supposed to be focused on? There's so many new things coming at me every day and just really tying together. Hey, here are the things in your personal life that are going to impact your ability to get what you want and live the life that you love. Mm -hmm. And here are the things that you need to have going on in your business. Just a few things that you need to focus on if you want to grow your income consistently and and build a business that's, you know, uh, built around your values, your principles for your life. And so it was really just um, those two things, you know, making it easily attainable for people for a couple bucks, an easy read and simplifying. Because I feel like even though, Lindsay, we're in a time where there's so much information at our fingertips, people are more confused and more frustrated than ever because with that, there's so much information that people just are so easily overwhelmed and confused with what should I be focused on. You get paralyzed. Exactly. Exactly. And I love that you touch upon um, a key thing there is, yeah, it's good to know, you know, business strategies and sales strategies and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, your business is just a part of your life and everything is intertwined and affects the other. So I like how you touch upon, you know, your life in general and, and how you can improve that and how it affects your business. Yeah, I think that's so important. And I think that, you know, when I interview people, I've had the opportunity to interview Tony Horton and some of the the really business greats of our time, you know, running eight figure plus, plus, plus businesses. And, you know, the stories and the feedback that I get from people twice my age that have been there and done what I'm trying to do a hundred times over, you know, over and over again comes back to, you know, remember what you want your life to look like and don't let yourself get so caught up in your business goals that you ruin your relationship, you destroy your health, um, you're not a present parent, all of those things, because at the end of the day, you will have regret and you will not like what you built for yourself because although you achieved that one thing, mm-hmm. you compromise and sacrifice everything else in the process. And and so for me, I feel like being a, a little bit on the younger side, starting my business, not not super young, obviously there's <laughs> teenagers that are, that are starting businesses today, but you know, being exposed to these people that are doing these amazing things and and really getting to soak in their learnings Mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to live by those things and and making choices today that won't cause us to have regrets tomorrow, I think is so, so important. You're right. Our businesses and our lives are completely intertwined. Mm -hmm. We can't treat them as two separate things because in every way they both impact one another. That is so true. And, uh, you know, you probably don't realize this, but I'll never forget when we were having lunch when we were at uh, DBA in, in Maryland and we were talking about, you know, our business and how busy it is and blah, blah, blah. And I think I mentioned, oh yeah, I want to take, you know, half of Friday off moving forward eventually or Friday mornings or whatever it was. And you're like, well, why aren't you? I'm like, because I'm so busy. She's like, <laughs> and you're like, will decide to have Friday off and then you'll just, your clients and this, that will have to work around it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in control. <laughs> you know, yeah, we won't so forget that up, right? It's, it, It's so easy because we do get so busy and, you know, it's so easy to let the demands of our business or our clients or our team or whatever it is begin to dictate our lives. And sometimes we're so busy that we're not even in control of stopping it. I know. And like, I'll have to go to my team and be like, stop the madness. No more calls on my calendar. Like my calendar is done for two weeks because I'll look at my calendar and I'll see I have 13 calls for the day. And I'm like, this is crazy. So it's like, sometimes we're so busy that we don't pick our heads up enough to say, hey, you know, I want to be off on Fridays and, you know, just letting our teams know, you know, don't, don't schedule anything. Don't book anything for me. And you will find a way to accomplish what you need to from Monday through Thursday. But sometimes we do forget that we are in control and it's in the power of the definitive decision that everything starts to shift and mold into what we want it to be. And that is so true. And you think that things will be crazier, but it's not. I mean, I've scheduled, like I go to yoga, I go to the gym in the morning and it's like, really, I don't start work until 10 o'clock, which technically is kind of late. And I thought it would make my work day hectic, but I'm like, I'm uber focused and I get the same amount done in that time. And meanwhile, I still be able to have time to myself and be healthy and it's, it, it works out. 
Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't agree, agree more. And, you know, I used to get up in the morning, Lindsay, and like, you know, five o'clock, I would be like on it. Like I would start working at five in the morning. Oh my God. And I made a big change, you know, a couple months ago and, and really started taking time in the morning to focus on my health and my wellness. And I've always kind of done meditation in the morning, but I started like taking time to slow down and like work out mm. and take care of myself again. And it's so hard to do that because especially if you're like type A, super driven, you just yep. want to get your work. <laughs> I want to like get on top of the day, but you know, taking that step back to focus on personal things brings you so much more happiness and personal fulfillment in your life. Yeah. And you're right. Then when you are working, you're a thousand percent more I focused. Know. You can get more done in less time anyway. Yeah. Totally. So thank you for pushing me. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so glad. That's such a fun, uh, I'm so glad that you shared that, that you actually did it. I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's awesome. Now, what areas do you feel that entrepreneurs typically fail at or don't do well at when they're trying to grow their business and how can they improve? Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I think the biggest misconception, you know, out there, and it's, it's amazing, but it, it still is, is, you know, entrepreneurs get into the business that they're in because they love doing what they do. Mm -hmm. And what most entrepreneurs even today still don't realize about their business is they're in sales and marketing. They're not in whatever business it is that they do. And if they have a goal of ultimately scaling their business, whether it's to, um, you know, ultimately be able to take a step back and have someone run it for you or be able to sell it one day or be able to retire early, then ultimately your role in the business as the CEO will not end up being the doer of whatever thing you got into business to do. Mm -hmm. You will be the visionary. You will be the decider. You'll be the manager, the, the direction um, of the vision and, and where things fall. So I think it's really understanding the business that you're in, number one. And number two, realizing that if you do not have a sales and marketing background yeah. and you are starting your own business, that your number one goal, your number one responsibility has to be learning and mastering sales and marketing because those that don't or refuse to, or, you know, are not willing to are ultimately part of the 95% of businesses that fail because yeah. a business simply cannot survive and thrive without having lifeblood energy, you know, income being pumped into it via new clients. So if you're not, I mean, not everyone is good at sales, nor are the like just personality wise, right? Um, or like doing it or same with marketing, it can feel overwhelming. Do you recommend like to learn all that stuff yourself or to outsource? I think it completely depends on your vision for the business and what you're willing to invest and how quickly you want to grow. Right. So it really, it, the, I, the answer changes based on every single part. Like if there's a hundred people in the room, there might be a hundred different ways of going about it. But the bottom line is either you need to learn it and do it and master it, or you need to learn how to manage someone yeah. to do it and master it, which means that even if you're not going to be the one doing it, you have to learn how to manage someone doing it because then if you are paying someone to do sales and marketing for you and you haven't mastered it, guess what? You're going to be really easily taken advantage of yeah. and chances are you're not going to be happy with the results. So, you know, my philosophy is one way or another, if you want to stay in business and you want to ultimately sell, scale up or retire, that you should master sales and marketing because you, you either need to have effective oversight or you need to effectively do it one way or the other. There's really no third alternate to that. And, you know, it does feel overwhelming, but you know, I would say number one, most people think that selling is about being good at sales when it's really not. It's just about serving people. That's true. You know, it's just about serving people and, you know, it's about listening to people's needs and understanding their desires and meeting them where they are and showing them how they can cross the bridge from where they are today to where they want to be. That's all that it is. And the sales term, the sales term does have a bad rap. And when you, when you think like, oh, you need to do sales, it's like, oh, <laughs> like it has a horrible connotation. Like it kind of sucks sometimes. Um, how do you get over that mindset? 
Yeah, definitely. Well, I actually have been doing a lot of um, guest uh, speaking on this recently, awesome. and I'm glad that you brought it up, Lindsay, because one of the things that I've been really getting out there, one of the messages I'm trying to get across to the entrepreneurial community is that this is the best ever moment in time to build and grow a thriving business, mm -hmm. and especially for those of you that do not consider yourself salespeople. And the reason why I say that is for the first time ever, almost exclusively Exclusively, people are buying based on your service to them. And what I mean by that is yeah. people are buying based on you teaching in a webinar. Mm -hmm. They're buying based on getting to know you and you adding value for them via a podcast. They're buying based on you getting on and teaching on short live streams on Facebook or Periscope mm -hmm. or Snapchat or whatever it is for the first time ever the the whole sales conversation has moved away from traditional selling and it's it's shifted almost exclusively to serving no. So if you are a person that cares about your target market and really wants to help them, like now is your moment. Now is yeah, your moment so to shine because that's how people are buying now. You don't even have to be a salesperson. You just have to figure out what platform do you like teaching on and go out mm. there and serve. And it's through that service that people are ultimately going to pull out their credit cards and, and reach out to you and say, how can I work with you? And I think, and that's a really good point. And I think being authentic and being yourself and not being something that you think people want to hear or be, do you know what I mean? Um, people want that relationship. Oh, they want to, they want to like you and trust you and they only want to work with people that they like and trust. It, oh, I, I couldn't yeah. agree more. And I think that's the really awesome thing about live streaming. Like yeah. I've been using Facebook live in my business and, and that started to be a nice client generation tool for us. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's really nice because I can feel comfortable getting on there. Some nights I have a zip up hoodie on, you know, sometimes I have a t-shirt on other times if, you know, if I was out for a client meeting or whatever, I might be dressed um, a little bit more formally, but I feel like I can just be myself yeah. I don't need to, you know, have all of these, like, it, I I feel like in the past it was so much more formal yeah you had to portray a specific image that you're perfect and your business is perfect and you look gorgeous and yeah I don't know and it, yeah it just doesn't need to be like that anymore yeah. and actually what's really interesting Lindsay is I believe the pendulum has actually swung very far to the other side yeah. like I feel like the more you're just kind of down to earth and the more you're like raw peeled back just kind of conversational the more people are into you yeah. the more that you're formal and zipped up Ugh. people don't feel like they're connecting with you they feel like there's a barrier between yeah. them so it's like, it's actually swung all the way to the other side of like, you have to let yourself be comfortable being yourself. And the yeah. more that you do that, the more that people are building that affinity and trust with you. And that's so true. And it's kind of like, you know, you in your hoodie and because whenever I've seen you, you look all perfect. <laughs> But it's like, same with like, you know, Jessica Rhodes. It's like, you know, she's walking down the street with her kids and she's wearing like a t-shirt or whatever. It's like, you know what? Things are not perfect. I'm not perfect, but I'm damn good at my business and I can help you. And yeah, they want someone that's real and authentic. It's, it's great. And so, yeah, just for anybody listening, I would say if, if anything has been holding you back from getting started yeah. with doing live streaming in your business, I would definitely say like, that's one action to take today because it's instant access to your audience. It's a free commercial for your business. Mm -hmm. and it, you can do it from your home office, from your living room, your bedroom, your basement, whatever, just find a quiet space and do it. And it's, it's really the highest form of connection that you can have with your audience besides if you were physically there with them in person. So if there's someone that's listening, it's like, I'm not a good salesperson. I'm not a good marketer. I don't even know where to begin. Um, I don't feel like, you know, it, it's not what I'm naturally good at. You know, stop focusing on the yeah. selling and marketing and just focus on, hey, are you willing to get on camera once a week and serve? Are you willing to get on camera once a week and give a quick tip that relates to the products and services that you share? And then at the end, you know, say, by the way, if you're interested in more, private message me. Or, you know, by the way, you can get on my um, email list and get this free training by, you know, opting into this, you know, and, and that relationship will snowball and people will begin to share those Facebook 
Facebook lives and they will begin to want to tune in when you go live. And, and that will eventually become a platform for you that people show up to each week because they want to see you. They want to learn from you and connect with you. And, and that begins the process of audience building, which really reverses the dynamic um, away from you having to go out and sell mm -hmm. and more so into the attraction marketing of you show up every week, you over deliver with the free content, and then people start coming to you and wanting to know how you can help them. Love it. And I love changing that mindset from sales to serving. And it, it can make such a world of difference. I, I love that. Now, Definitely. You, you do say that sometimes we leave money on the table um, as entrepreneurs. What do you mean by that? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I find that the vast majority of my clients, when they first start in one of my programs, I'll do a quick chat with them usually before they get on the first, you know, group call or, or get started with the new program. And, you know, typically the first thing that I uncover is that most entrepreneurs are undercharging by about 50%. So whatever they're charging, they could double that um, or, or at least, you know, cut that in half and, and half that up and, and they would be closer to where they should be. And I think that the hardest thing to market and stand your ground on and charge, you know, what you're worth for is when you're marketing your own business, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we all psychologically are much more inclined to reduce our rates, to get the client than to stand our ground and be okay if they walk. Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is when you do that, you're, you're kind of building this black hole that you keep going deeper and deeper into wow. because th you're then giving up that time to service clients that are demanding and, you know, are, are requiring so much but you're not making what you're worth for it and it really it dims the spark it it, it takes away from your love and joy in, in running and growing your business so I mean I would just say that um, in general look at your pricing that's probably an area that I could say 10 people that are tuning into the show today need to raise their rates right away and the easiest way to do that <laughs> is right yes <laughs> Uh, yeah, like it is to give your audience a heads up. Like I did this when I raised my rates earlier this year on the unstoppable entrepreneur. Like I gave my list like a three week heads up and I said, Hey, there's three weeks left. And I did like five promotions, letting people know it's, it's going to go up. And not only have we had no trouble transitioning into the higher rate, which I always recommend people do a price increase either every six months or very bare minimum once a year. But it was really interesting because when we got to the final two days of the rate staying where it was before it jumped up, we had like almost 15 people join the program. And so it got people off the fence and it got them to make that commitment. And so not only are you not going to go backwards, but you're going to have a burst of people that have been on the fence that you finally get off the fence that sign up, which is great. And then on the flip side, the new people that start coming in are coming in at that significantly higher rate. So it allows you to then have more money to invest in growing your team and advertising and doing the other great things that you want to do to build your business. So when it comes to, you've talked about pricing, um, increasing your pricing, which is amazing. Um, you also talk about active and passive income. Um, you know, I understand what they are, but some people don't quite grasp it. And, and you say that we should have both of those. Um, so maybe explain that to the audience a little bit. Sure, definitely. Yeah, so when we all first start our businesses, typically all of the income that we make is from directly serving our customers. And that's very natural. And that's mm -hmm. the first place that everyone starts. But then it's very important if you want to truly have a lifestyle or freedom based business or just the flexibility of being a true business owner. At some point, you have to be able to make income without you having to physically be present to do it. Because if you don't start building that in, then you know, you, you get capped very you know, early in the income yeah. growth phase of your business and, and you're really stuck from that point forward. And so, you know, that's where it becomes very important to decide, okay, in the beginning, you start off doing one-to-one -one work and then you want to take that one-to-one -one work and say, how can I turn this into audio programs, digital products, a physical book, and look at creating courses programs and take it from one to one to one to many. And then from one to many, how do you take it from one to many to something that's totally digital hands off that either your team can deliver for you or that people can buy independently. Like my book, for example, that's a passive income stream. Every single month I get a check that comes through my, you know, inbox from audible for the audio book. Mm -hmm. And then I have money that comes through from Amazon every single month. I don't do anything to do that. I just have all of my funnels set up that when people join my list and when people are going to my website, 
they're being invited to buy their copy of the book. And so, you know, you want to look at how can you start thinking about taking the work that you're already doing and translating that into something that can be delivered over and over again without you. Because, you know, as an entrepreneur, what if you get sick? What if yeah. you got in a car accident? What if you had a family member that, you know, or your child got very sick and there was a period where you couldn't work? You know, what if, you know, one of those life events happen that, you know, got you into a situation where you couldn't physically get up and deliver personally for your clients. Is your whole business going to shut down? Mm -hmm. Are you not going to have any income coming in? There has to be planning. And the thing about passive income, and obviously, you know, this too, Lindsay, like it's, it's hard work and it takes time. Yeah. And so passive income is one of those things that you need to start early and you need to have a three to five year plan of how you're going to grow and build that because it's not, it's not a quick, easy no. over the night, you know, push of a button strategy. That's why most people never actually get off the ground with creating it because they think it's not working. It's not that it's not working. It's that if passive income was easy, we'd all be retired on the beach, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, it, it takes a, a lot of planning and building and implementing and setting up and then letting it run and the sales funnels. Yeah, there's a lot involved. But I mean, the payoff is huge. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, even if you start, and I talk about this in my book, like even if you start and you just say, okay, my goal is that I want to grow my passive income by $100 a month. Mm -hmm. That's totally reasonable. Oh, Anybody yeah. can do that. So if you start today and you say, I, I want to focus on growing my passive income by $100 a month each month, and that's just one goal that you always kind of keep on the side of your business and you work on, you know, a few years from now, you're going to have 5,000. A few more years, you're going to have 10,000. And when you get to the point where you have 10,000 a month in passive income, that's over a six figure salary. Then at that point, you're really, you get to decide like the rest of your life is just kind of open season in terms mm -hmm. of how you want to use your time and where you want to put your physical energy and focus because you're already taken care of with your passive income. Yeah, it, it's a great goal. And I think too, and, and I remember when I started in my business, you know, hours equaled money. I mean, you, you know, you bill per hour and then you, you need to get out of that because you're going to cap yourself at a specific amount and then, you know, creating packages and same with, maybe you can talk about this a little bit too, is that I find some entrepreneurs get pigeonholed um, or, or down this kind of path where it's, they only have one source of income coming in. Yes, 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 definitely. Yeah. And, and that's, that's again, you know, it's something that takes planning. Yeah. Um, and it's something that you have to really step outside of the day to day and look at, and you, you have to be able to look at the different stages that your customer is going to go through and make sure they can graduate from one phase to the next yeah. and that you have that next thing ready for them. Um, like, because otherwise what happens is when they're ready for what's next, they have to go outside of you. It's like an obvious yeah. thing. Like either you provide it to them or they're going to go somewhere else to get it. Right. Yeah. Or even, <clears throat> and I've noticed this on, you know, one of my past clients, she, you know, had a program and it was a very high level. So there was no mid tiered, there was no group, there was, there weren't different options. So it, that can create its own problem. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. Well, I feel like that's where I started out because I started off just, you know, doing all private one-on-one -on -one consulting. And so it was only accessible to people that could make this huge investment every single month. And I began to realize that I was losing tons of income because yeah. I didn't have different tiers for people that were in different stages and at different income brackets. And that's why I then went from one-on-one to then adding the groups to then adding the courses to then adding the audio products mm -hmm. to then adding the book because it's covering the range. Yeah. And then actually this year I added on a, a higher level mastermind so that the people that go through the Unstoppable Entrepreneur, which is like my year long program can graduate and then move into that next Next layer up. So it's like you have to look up and you have to look down, but you're absolutely exactly. right. And it's, it's, 
your teaching, a lot of your teaching overlaps and a lot of the work that you do, you can do it once and repurpose it over and over again. So like, for example, every time I create a new training, that's going to go into my unstoppable entrepreneur program in the membership site where we have like over a hundred trainings in that program, I'm then taking that audio and repurposing it into another one of my courses that I'm selling separately. And so you just have to kind of get a system for yourself and say, how can I do this work once and get paid for it over and over again. That is a great tip. That is a really good tip. Um, so in your coaching programs, whether it's group or individual, um, explain how you're like what you're doing with your clients or what you're teaching them or how you're helping them grow just so we have a better understanding. Yeah, definitely. So there's kind of phases that I work through with people starting with mindset because the number one thing that dictates why people are where they are or aren't where they want to be is their mindset. So there's there's kind of like five phases I bring people through. The first one is getting your head screwed on straight so that you can actually achieve the results that you want. Yeah. The second thing that I do, Lindsay, is I look at the productivity because Everyone I come in contact with says, I'm so busy. I can't possibly do one more thing. I'm totally maxed out. I'm exhausted and I'm overwhelmed. Like that is everyone today, right? Yep. And what I find is that the average person I can uncover 20 hours a week that is being wasted or misused or could Mm. be reappropriated to higher dollar, more valuable things that would get them the results that they want. So the second step is evaluating what things can be eliminated, what replaced, what things can be upgraded, um, to find a way to get them things off their plate so they can make space for the new things they need to put on their plate. So that's phase two. Phase three is then sales. So you got to learn how to move your product. You got to learn how to close clients. You got to learn how to be able to get on the phone with someone, make an offer and have them say yes. So it's really getting good at honing in that offer, confidence in your pricing, your packaging, your positioning, um, and the ability to get people to say yes. And then we move into engineering your celebrity. So engineering your celebrity is all about using the tools and tactics of today to sell one to many and to serve one to many. So that's, you know, using webinars, it's using Facebook. Facebook Live, it's using podcasting, it's using the tools that you can manage from your home to be able to scale up your business. And alongside that, understand the marketing systems that will be necessary to be able to fill group programs and, you know, move away from one-to-one servicing into one-to-many. And then the final step of the process, Lindsay, is really all about team. So, you know, most people wait too long to hire or don't hire the right people or don't understand how to manage them. And because of that, they're kind of in it alone and it's exhausting. It's overwhelming and it, and it really holds them back from achieving their, their income goals. Plus it's a a huge drag on your quality of life when you're so stressed out and burnout all the time. So kind of the fifth phase in the process is the, um, the, the team building piece and learning how to do that affordably, strategically and effectively so that you can continue to grow without putting more hours into your business each week. Awesome. You've got a really good range of, um, you know, the mindset, the practical stuff, but the planning and the strategy, um, very well-rounded. That's perfect. So how can people find you, Kelly? What did you say? How can people find you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, my home on the web is kellyroachcoaching.com. Um, I'm on Facebook. I do Facebook Live every week. So if you're interested in business growth strategy and getting some marketing you know, tips and feedback that way, definitely um, catch me on my page there, which is just under Kelly Roach International. I can never get my name on any platform anywhere. So that's why my website has to have an extra word. My Facebook page has to have an extra word. Um, you'll never find just Kelly Roach on anything because uh, there is a mad scientist somewhere in Europe that has all of that. Nice. <laughs> that's all right. It sets you apart. And now I know you um, have some great resources out there and great trainings. Um, and I know you want to share one uh, with the audience. Um, where can they find those or, or which one would you like to share? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know what? I was just thinking, Lindsay, we were just talking a little bit about the time thing. And I think the time thing is is really something that holds people back a lot. And I have a yeah. really good free training um, that people can get by going to kellyroachcoaching.com forward slash productivity. Perfect. And it walks you through that exercise that I just talked about to, to help you identify those 20 hours in your week that are being wasted that you can eliminate so that you can make room for more of the things that are going to help you achieve your goals. So I would definitely recommend 
recommend that for anyone at any level. Yeah. Um, and then I would say if we have some higher level people that are listening today that are already doing, you know, a good amount of business, but they really want to scale up and they want to engineer their celebrity through the, the tools and tactics that we talked about today with podcasting and webinars and live streaming, you can text in the word celebrity to 44222, or I'll also provide you with a link to that afterwards, Lindsay, that you can yeah. add to your notes so that people can grab a copy of that. That's perfect. And yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to find more time in their week? And it, it it's funny because um, even one of my staff, it's like, you know, they work so many hours and yet the billable hours and the hours that they worked and I'm like, okay, clearly there's a productivity issue. <laughs> right. You know what I right. mean? Like we, and I know a couple of things uh, of what I bet what it is. Um, so I'm going to be doing a, a screencast uh, for my team on how to be more efficient and productive in a day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I and that's tell them to that productivity is something yeah. no matter what level you're at. Exactly. Every couple months, you have to go back to the drawing board and really question every minute that you're spending on every single thing because it's very easy to get taken yeah. off track and you don't even realize it. I know. And then all of a sudden, you could find five, 10 hours that you're like, whoa, wait a second, this was not a priority for me. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so easy. I mean, I'm eat up productivity tips and I love them, but it's like I fall into old habits and then I catch myself. I'm like, dang, I got to get back on track. Um, it's so easy to fall back. You do need those reminders. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for sharing those resources. Um, I know I'll be sharing them with my team and obviously everyone that's uh, listening to this podcast and we'll check yeah, out absolutely. the notes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hope uh, for the listeners that there's some, some good stuff you guys can pull out of it. Absolutely. Um, and so folks out there um, to find the podcast and uh, you know, my other podcast videos and blogs and great resources, you can go to lindsayphillips.com. So it's L Y N D S A Y P H I L L I P S. Um, so I don't have the same issue as you, Kelly. Um, I, sometimes I wish I was like Amy Smith or something and I can <laughs> hear you more out. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Ah, um, but yeah, that's where I am. Um, and of course, uh, if you do need help growing your business um, and help implementing all of the content marketing pieces, go to ssonlinesupport.com. So until next time, folks, I wish you all a productive and profitable week and may the winds always be at your back. You've been listening to the Sailing to Success podcast, the show created exclusively for entrepreneurs and small business owners looking for a safe port in the storm of fast-paced business growth. To make sure you don't miss a single profit-boosting show, subscribe to this podcast at iTunes and www.sailingtosuccesspodcast.com. To learn more about how Lindsay and her team can help you increase customer service, run your business more effectively, and increase your profits, go to www.ssonlinesupport.com. That's www.ssonlinesupport.com. Now go and implement what you've learned and come back next week for more Sailing to Success podcasts.